Hello, this is Wes at Bad Seed Games, and we're going to be picking up where we left off. Now, when we left off, we had set up the random wandering um, system so that basically it'll choose a random point and then move towards it. Now, this is all well and good, but let's go a little bit further because as it stands right now, there is no way to actually transit between the two of them. All right, now, first thing we're going to do is we're going to set it up so that it's ready to accept the commands when we're going to send it to them. So let's have new events, pursue, and let's call it wander because it's more accurate than move than just a movement or whatever. All right, and let's give these global transitions. So this is going to be the pursue, and this one is going to be wander. Now I've created an empty state right here, mostly for my own peace of mind, because I wanted to make sure for the testing that it would do the things that I needed to, and not just automatically go into one or the other. All right, so in order to continue this, though, let's add a new finite state machine, and let's call this Movement Manager. And this is going to be a simple two-state. Um, a simple two-state system and in it we're going to be doing a few things. The first thing that we're going to be doing is when it enters into a state it's going to send an event and then the next two events we're going to be testing two variables so let's get it set up with send event and now the two boolean variables are going to be from the condition manager and we're going to be sending them over so we need to have two conditions to send it to, so let's give it in front, since we're going to be using the visual range boolean, and in range, since we're going to be using the distance. Oops, and these need to be bools, not game objects. Alright, so now that these have been set, let's get them wired up. Alright, now there are going to be two boolean operations, one is going to be bool operator, and the other is going to be a bool test. Now, the bool operator, this one is a new one that I've used, and I've basically just come across it about two, three days ago. It will give you the option to compare two Boolean values and use the logical operands, such as and, 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 or, and XOR. Now, for those of you that are familiar with this, this is going to be a breath of fresh air because it will give you the option of cont doing Boolean operations and comparing them all in one action. So it will should shave off just a few notes of uh, it should shave a few uh, uh, well, it should save on processors. Now the thing is, uh, sorry, save on processor cycles. Okay, that's what I was trying to say. Now, we also need a third one in which to store the results, so let's create that one, and let's call this one condition. Since, in essence, it is going to be... F f f it is going to be working on the conditions. Now, I'm going to expose these three to the inspector so that I can show you what they do, because it's a lot easier to see them work when it's live. Alright. So, keep your eye on this space as we go through it. Now, Let's start... Oh, wait. <laughs> Completely forgot. We need to tell it to extract, or we need to get it the variables that it needs to calculate. So, conditions. Since we've got all the three here, the uh, within range, within visible, is visible, and within a visual field, let's just take one of these, since we don't need to uh, go through It'll save us a few seconds, so paste and paste, rather than having to sort through. Now, the FSM name that we're going to go is the Movement Manager, so let's set both of these here. And this one is going to be in front, and this one is going to be in range, and we're going to set it with um, within visual field. And this one we're going to be using range, player in range. Alright, so <laughs> let's go back to it. <laughs> Actually, it's right there. Okay. Yeah, you can tell it's a Monday. Alright, so if you take... If you keep an eye out here, you'll notice the in front and in range are going to be changing, and the condition is going to change as well. So... Let's go in here. 
Oh, yeah. We need to make it every frame. And even though I've been doing this for a while, I still make mistakes. And everyone's going to make mistakes, so if you make mistakes, don't be discouraged. Just push through them. Alright, so if you notice a condition is true, because in front and in range is are true as well. If we move back, in front is no longer true, and that makes the conditions as no longer true as well. Because the and basically takes two values, and it's basically if bool1 and bool2 are true, then make conditions true. Now if we do the same for, uh, say, the difference between the and and the or, which are the two main ones, it basically means if bool1 or bool2 are true, then make conditions true. Now the n and and the x or is pretty much the opposite, so for example, let's say the n and. It basically means that if um, if neither bool1 nor bool2, if neither bool1 and bool2 are true, then store the result as true. So as you can see right now, they're both false, so the conditions is set to true. One is true, still true, but now that they're both true, it's false. And the last one, XOR. So if neither X nor, so if neither one nor two are true, see, condition is true, range is true, but the difference is that since the XOR is basically seeing that both of them are true, it means, okay, I don't set, I cannot set conditions as true because neither of them, they, I need one true and not the other true. This is ho hopefully that should answer a few questions. All right, so now that we've got that set up, let's get conditions and set up the events. So to pursue and to wander. Let's name these appropriately. So let's make this one wander. All right, so copy. Paste. Let's not change the start state and just make this pursue. All right, let's set them up the way that we need. It's a simple back forth state. All right, so now that we've got this set up, so in the wander, we basically want it to wander whenever the conditions is false. That basically means that since in front and in range and the AND operator is going to give us, as soon as the conditions give us a true, we want it to go to pursue. Now for this one, let's make sure it's AND as well. If this one is false, we'll make it go wander. And again, every frame. Okay, now this is all good, but we need to then tell it to do something. Since at this state, as you can see, It is clicking over, but all that it's doing right now is the operation, so we need to tell it to do something. So let's make the send events active. Since it's sending to itself, it's going to be a game object FSM. Sorry. So game object FSM, and it's going to be using itself. So we're going to be sending it to movement in both cases. And the wander is going to tell it to wander, and the pursue is going to tell it to pursue, as you would expect. So let's give that a shot. So it's in the wander state, and it's wandering, and, and there it goes. It's now pursuing. Since it's out of the range, it's now back to wandering. All right, now at this point in time, this AI system could be complete because it will give you a basic enemy AI system. Now in the next chapter that I'm going to be setting up, we're going to be going over some how to take this particular system and refine it so that we can get more out of it. Things such as give, making keep track of the aggro, who's attacking it, waypoints, and that type of thing. But until then, I hope you've liked this video, and if you did, feel free to comment, rate, and subscribe, and I hope you have a great one.